Hi, this is Maria Mandarino. And first, I have to apologize for not being here for a few weeks. Uh, a few things were going on. I, uh, first of all, I had gotten sick, so, um, so I took some time off. And um, I also have been working on my webinar. Finally, if you've been following this channel, you know that there have been some starts and stops with my course. So I do have a webinar coming up. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. I want to talk about first talk first about what we are going to be uh, talking about today in this episode, which is your Enneagram as it relates to your rising sign, your astrological um, rising sign, and understanding your outer self. Uh, the way you present to the world and your inner motivations through the Enneagram. Um, so that's part of what we're going to look at today. And, you know, my fascination with the Enneagram and I, I think I've the Enneagram in astrology, and I think I've talked about that here before. Um, my fascination with it is two maps that bring us to the same place. They, they help us achieve uh, what we set out to achieve in our astrological chart, which to me is our, um, our divine gift. It's what's worked out before we arrive here, before we, before we draw our first breath. And, um, and then we get here and we make eye contact with the first caregiver, usually our, our mothers, but not, not always. Um, and we get feedback in that glance. And we continue to do this from birth to age 21 as our Enneagram forms. And we're trying to ascertain how to get our needs met based on what we do and what the expression is that comes back at us from this person that we're, that we're engaged in eye contact with. So it starts at that moment. And just before that moment, there's this decision, there's this spark that we come in on at that moment that determines our sun sign, our rising sign, our moon sign, right? So that spark, that moment is key to me um, in how our Enneagram then starts to meet us every single day, um, every moment of every single day to live out our natal chart. So um, to me, they are braided together beautifully. Um, and one is a divine gift and the other, the Enneagram is the earthly gift because that's what happens once we arrive in physical form. But prior to that, just as, as we just come on in to, um, to earth, um, it's the natal chart. And then, and then there's this earthly map called the Enneagram. So um, that's what we're going to look at today, how we um, live out one um, through the other. Um, so before we begin, I want to remember you all the uh, remind you to do all the housekeeping things. Please like, comment, share the episode. Remember to subscribe. Uh, most of the people viewing this channel, it's almost 80% of you are viewing this channel without subscribing. So um, unless you have a real reason to not want to subscribe, uh, it would really help the channel out if you did. So, um, so if you're interested in this content, want to hear more about the work that I'm doing, please remember to click that subscribe button because it really does matter. And uh, I am still trying to reach that uh, goal of 500 subscribers. It's a modest goal. I'd like to, I'd like to exceed that goal, but I also believe in realistic goals. So if you can help me reach that goal, that would be awesome. So, um, and then before we jump into the content today, I want to talk briefly about the webinar. Please note your calendars if you're interested in this. It's a free course. Nine ways to create healthy boundaries and improve your relationships through the Enneagram. It's going to be held on Saturday, November 9th at 10 o'clock Mountain Time. So uh, it will be a live webinar. Um, there will be a link in the show notes for you to sign up for that. And it'll also be on my website. It's actually already on my website. Uh, shout out to Ethan, who's been helping me with the text. Or if you're watching this, Ethan, thank you for everything. Um, and so that's on my website or through the show notes, you can sign up for the course. Um, again, the, November, uh, the 9th of November at 10 o'clock Mountain Time. And um, so let's jump into to the content. I'm going to be talking about today. So first, um, if you're not familiar with your rising sign, if you're not familiar with your chart, there are um, three things we look at in the chart. We call them the three bigs. The sun sign, which is your astrological sign. Most people know that one, right? So whatever your zodiac sign is, is your, your sun sign, excuse me. 
And um, then we have the moon sign. And then we have the rising sign, also known as the ascendant. So the rising sign or the ascendant is um, best described as the armor that you put on or the cloak that you put on when you leave your home. It's how you wish to be seen by those in the world, right? So it's kind of like the outer face. It's the mask that we wear. Um, and there is an overlap to that rising sign, to that persona um, that we bring forth into the world. Um, there is an overlap to the Enneagram. So uh, we're going to look at some of that today. So type one, type one is um, commonly known as the perfectionist. Um, and the core motivations of type one is to be right, to be in integrity, and to always be working hard, using their energy to work hard to improve. Like their mental focus is always like there's, type ones have an inner critic. So that inner critic is always saying do better, is always saying do better, do better. Okay. So those are the core motivations of Enneagram type one. Um, and this is not a hard and fast rule. So I should have said this early on. So we have 12 houses in astrology. We have only nine types in the Enneagram. So... Some of you are going to correct me, okay? And I know I'll get comments on this. Um, Enneagram ones can be other rising signs than the ones the one that I'm going to point out, as is going to be true for all nine types that I'm talking about today. I am giving you examples of how certain signs, certain rising signs behave like certain Enneagram signs. So this is not a hard and fast rule. Again, 12 houses, nine types, it can't be an equal exchange, okay? So there's some creative leeway in this. And I encourage you to take that creative leeway. I mean, that's what this is about. This isn't about what I'm here to, you know, indoctrinate anybody about. This is about you, your Enneagram journey, and your chart. So play with it, okay? If you don't know much about your chart, um, I do that work. So uh, reach out and um, you can do that through the, uh, the website. You can schedule a chart with me and we can look at this as well. Okay, so for type one, knowing that those core motivations are being right, being an in integrity, working hard to improve, that can look an awful lot like a Capricorn rising, okay? So Capricorn rising, the goat, okay, that climbs up the hill uh, or the mountain, I should say, um, that Capricorn rising wants to be seen as discipline, disciplined, structured, responsible, dependable, hardworking, goal oriented um they're ruled by saturn which is uh, the disciplinarian of the zodiac so um so yeah so if you're a type one you may be a capricorn rising if you're a capricorn rising or have strong capricorn in your chart and that's a whole other um that's a whole other discussion but if you know your chart and you know what that means um you may lead with an enneagram one or you may be a two with a very strong one wing because okay, so there's a lot of ways to look at this this is a dance whether we're in the enneagram map whether we're in your chart it's a dance the way i the way i work with this the way i teach this the way i i, I work in session with people there's movement in these systems there is breath in these systems you are not locked into anything okay these are not labels that limit you it's information that frees you okay so i want you to remember that um type two uh, the giver of the Enneagram, right? Their core motivations are to be needed and loved. Type twos want to be valued for their helpfulness. They're very helpful people, but they, they appreciate being appreciated for that. It's important to them. And um, another one of their motivations is to just be in connection with people. It's one of their core motivations. Um. The twos that I know are the people who make home or will bring home. So um, if you have a home, they'll make it. Um, if there's no home, they'll bring it in. Okay, but uh, home is very important to them. So I'm mentioning this because we're going to talk about cancer rising. Okay, um, twos, again, is the giver, right? They give... Um, they give that loving environment, which most of us think of as home, right? And cancer is the crab that travels with its shell, okay? Their house, they travel with their house. 
Um, so Cancer Risings want to be seen for their nurturing and caring nature. So very type two like. Um, again, that Cancer is the crab, travels with their uh, with their home, with their shell. And uh, Cancerians are very protective of their loved ones and also of the home environment. Um, home fortress is very important to type twos. Um, cancers are ruled by the moon. And um, those who are ruled by the moon are usually emotional, um, empathetic. You know, those are words that we think of with Enneagram twos. Again, if you're a two and you're not a cancer rising, search. Search in your natal chart to see what other expression is there that um, reflects your Enneagram two. But where in your chart is this nurturing, giving energy? Because I promise you it's there. I absolutely promise you it's there. So these, again, just examples, okay? Just possibilities. All right. Type three are performers on the Enneagram. And their core motivation is to be recognized for being successful. They are adaptive. So they want to adapt in order to succeed. So if something's not working, they'll adapt to, to make something work. Um, we call them the chameleons on the Enneagram uh, because they will change in order to achieve the recognition that they're seeking. So if they don't get it one way, they're going to um, shift and change to, uh, to achieve what they're seeking. So if you're an Enneagram three, you may either be a Scorpio rising. Again, this is your outer mask that you're pre presenting to the world. Um, or you may have strong Scorpio in your chart. Okay. Um, so Scorpio rising wants to be seen as transformative. This is the sign of transformation. Uh, they're adaptable when necessary. That's how the Scorpio changes and, and transforms through adaptation. They're driven by power. They're also intense in reaching their goals. They're very, very focused. Um, unique to Scorpios are they can almost work themselves into death. Like most people can't keep the pace that a Scorpio can keep. And then they'll just like kind of go off somewhere and they'll, they'll bring themselves to the edge of death and resurrect. That's how hard they'll work uh, where anybody else might collapse. Okay. Scorpios won't. Um, so that's where that, uh, that intense power comes in for them, where they use this power to achieve their goals. So threes are awfully like that. Enneagram threes are awfully like that. Um, Scorpio's ruled by Pluto, dark and mysterious, uh, the god of the underworld, right? So the things that we cannot see and cannot know, um, Scorpio has access to those. Um, I think there's a reflection of that in the chameleon energy of the, um, of the Enneagram three. So, uh, so again, either a Scorpio rising or there's, some uh, Scorpio, Scorpionic um, energy uh, emerging in your chart somewhere, I'm sure. So type four, the romantic of the Enneagram. Core motivation for type four is to have a unique identity, to be seen as a unique individual. It's essential to them, it's so important. Um, and they need to express authenticity. They, they just need to feel authentic, believe that they're being seen as being authentic. Um, this is a, a real deep um, a quest for them almost. Um, they also seek emotional depth and significance. These are not people who are going to have the casual superficial conversations with you. They're going to go into the deep waters. Um, these are artistic people. They love beauty. And I would correlate them to Taurus rising. Um, wanting to be seen for their relationship to value and beauty. That's very important to, um, to Taurus rising. Um, or if you have strong Taurus in your chart, right? Uh, Taurus ruled by Venus, right? So relationship to value, beauty, comfort also is really important. I would say that's true of type fours too. They usually like um, these opulent, um, very Venusian types of... Um, of environments, homes, rooms, bedrooms. Um, they like comfort, the beauty of comfort too. Um, 
The Taurus rising also has a grounded connection to nature and the physical world. Um, I hear that a lot out of type four is how they connect with animals and uh, know animals and can, they, a lot of them will say they can see into the soul of an animal. So um, it's very uh, common for, for a Taurus rising to say something like that, their grounded connection to nature and the physical world, the animal world. And again, uh, ruled by Venus, goddess of love and beauty. So that's my, my connection to type four. Okay. And again, if you have something else in your chart, let us know because it's not just, not just one. Type five's core motivation to gain knowledge and understanding. Type five seek competence and have the ability to observe a situation from a distance with neutrality. They value privacy, they value good and clean boundaries, and they find intrusions very distressing. I chose Virgo rising for this one. Um, Virgo risings are motivated by a desire for practicality and order. They're highly organized, they're objective, they're analytical, and concerned with details. They are ruled by Mercury, who is the god of communication. So um, I'm really tempted on this one, and I was on the last one as well, because there are a couple of other rising signs I could toss out. Uh, I shouldn't say rising signs. There are a couple of other Enneagram types I could toss out that would correlate to both Virgo rising and Taurus rising, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really refrain <laughs> and, and, um, and keep myself from doing that in this episode partly because I'd really like to generate um, some conversation in the comments here, because I know you guys are going to have other ideas and you should, you should, because there are some other things that scream with these, with these descriptions of the Enneagram type. So I want, I want to see what you guys have experienced, what you see in your chart and your Enneagram and just what, from what you know of the Enneagram, what you might suspect um, that someone's rising sign might be. So as we go on, type six core motivation to seek security. Um, they are often driven by a need for loyalty and trust in relationships. Trust is really important to them. These are also trustworthy people. They find it hard to make decisions, however, and they can get caught up in conflicting thoughts and conflicting ideas and, and kind of um, really struggle and, and ruminate and find it hard to make a decision. So for this one, I chose Gemini Rising. And Gemini Rising wants to be seen for their communication skills and interest in variety. If you've ever had a conversation with a Gemini, they can speak about a lot of different things and they can speak well to them. So, um, so yeah, that's important to Gemini Rising. They seek knowledge. Um, they're very in interested in information and knowledge and then the social interaction, you know, the sharing of that knowledge, that's like really exciting to a Gemini rising. They love that. Um, so Gemini also has a desire for a variety and that can make it hard for them to land on one decision and stick with it, which is very similar to the six uh, when they're conflicted. Um, for Gemini, it really stems from a place of, um, Again, this desire for variety, but this curiosity, like Gemini just wants to learn all the things. So when you know all the things and it's hard to land, it's, it's kind of like a bee in the garden buzzing around all the flowers. It's hard to know which one you want to land on. So that's a, a Gemini kind of trait there. So, um, so yeah, so that's the one I chose for Enneagram type six. So on to type seven. Type seven, the, um, I don't think I mentioned type six is the loyalist or the loyal skeptic. And I don't think I mentioned back to five, type five was the observer. So I might've left that out. Type seven going onward is the epicure. Um, so the core motivation for type seven is to avoid pain by seeking pleasure. They would probably rather I say to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Um, type seven has a, a great love and thirst for adventure, for variety and new experiences. These are pleasurable things to the seven. They want to have experiences, new experiences, adventurous experiences, variety. The more things you can introduce the seven to, the happier they're going to be. So I chose for that one Sagittarius Rising. 
because Sagittarius rising wants others to see their passion for things like freedom and exploration. So freedom is definitely a seven word. Um, I would venture to say, I, mean, I say this all the time, there's nine ways to experience freedom, right? So we can look at that. That's probably an episode that we can explore on another time. But, um, but yeah, sevens love freedom. They don't want to be limited. They're afraid of being limited. If they're limited and held back, they may be forced to feel pain. Okay. So, um, so that's why I chose Sagittarius rising because they love the idea of freedom and exploration. Um, they're very expansive in their energy and their ideas and their, their thoughts, um, and their approach to life. So they're ruled by Jupiter, which is the planet of, of expansion and philosophy. So um, Sagittarian, Sagittarius rising is a very seven-ish energy. So that's why I chose that one. Um, and again, if you have something else in your chart, share it. Let us, let us know. Let's see where this dance kind of can start to happen. Um, type eight. Um, type eight is the protector of the Enneagram. Um, their core motivation is to assert control and protect themselves and protect others, particularly if the other is more vulnerable or perceived to be weak, not victims. Type eights don't, don't gravitate toward protecting victims. But if somebody is vulnerable or genuinely weak and, and, they, and as they perceive it in need of protection, a type eight will be there. Um, I think of type eight is like the energy of Archangel Michael sometimes. Um, so type eight is also driven by a desire for independence and strength. So, um, independence slash freedom, like I said, there's, there's nine ways to do that freedom thing. So, um, independence is really important to type eight as well. Okay. Um, and strength being, being strong, being perceived as strong. So for type eight, for the rising sign, I chose Aries, um, because Aries wants to be seen as driven by action. Okay. Aries initiates, they assert themselves boldly. They'll walk into a room and take what they want, just like an Enneagram 8 would, and they will pursue their goals. They won't get, um, they won't get tied up and stuff. They've got a goal or on it. Okay. Very much like an Enneagram 8, they go for it. Um, Aries risings are passionate and determined. They are ruled by Mars, curiously enough, the god of war, right? Aggression, type 8. Um, and also agriculture. The type eights that I know are very outdoorsy. Um, they have a love of the land. Uh, most of them are serious hikers. So um, so I think there's there's quite a bit of overlap there with type eight and, and Aries rising. Um, and then the last one that we have is type nine, our peacemaker on the Enneagram. Type nine's core motivation is to maintain peace and harmony, avoid conflict, and preserving relationships, keeping the status quo, making sure everybody's happy, everything's nice. That's kind of the the goal of of type nine, and keeping it keeping it all stable and pleasant, and just keeping everybody happy. So for that one, I chose Libra rising. Okay, um, Libra, the sign, the scales, right? Um, the sign of balance. And Libras want to be seen for their um, their value because they are ruled by Venus. Um, so they, they do have a lot to do with value, but it's uh, their value on balance and partnership. That's particularly what Libras uh, find important to have balance in is um, partnership. I got that wrong. But Libras... Libra's value more is balance and partnership, particularly balance in partnership, I would say. Um, Libra also values fairness, which we see in Enneagram nines as well. It's kind of how they keep everybody happy, um, create this peaceful environment um, by making things fair, um, just keeping the scales balanced. So Libra rising and Enneagram nine. Libra rising will also strive for harmony and connection through understanding. And nines are brilliant at that. You know, like they want to, they want, that's why nines merge. They want to merge to understand you and your needs. And this way, if they understand you, they can create this harmony, right? Um, so, so there's that Libra type energy that runs through the nine. And again, 
I invite your comments to, to see how your rising sign in particular, you're right, you know, because again, this is your mask. This is your external um, persona that you bring out to the world when you leave your house. It's not, it's not who you are when you come home and sit on the couch. It's who you are when you step off your front porch and go out into the world. It's the mask that you put on. It's the facade. It's how you want to convey or present your energy to the world. Okay, so I want you to think about your rising sign again. If you don't know it, um, you can reach out. Uh, there are ways to also find that out online. Um, if you'd like to do deeper work, um, reach out to me because that is what I do. And if you know your Enneagram, I bring these things together. This is how I work. I, I make the dance happen um, between both systems of sacred geometry. So if you do know both of those things, um, you may enjoy working with me. So, um, so yeah, so please comment, uh, share your rising sign, your Enneagram sign, um, share the episode with people that you talk to about these kinds of things, see what they think. Remember to like, and please subscribe, uh, really does matter. Um, it, it would be so helpful if the, if even half of the 80% of people, uh, would subscribe to the channel, um, the 80% that aren't, um, subscribed yet. So, um, so yeah, so please do that. Please look for the uh, webinar. Please sign up for it. If you can't do it live on the 9th of November, you will get the recording shortly after the after the webinar. So, um, so I invite you to do that. It is free. Um, would love to see you using the Enneagram to enhance your, your relationships. The world needs that, people. Okay, so um, enroll. Tell other people about it. We've got a couple of weeks. Let's get the enrollment going. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Again, my apologies for my, uh, my extended hiatus us for a few weeks. I was thinking about everybody here, but I just couldn't, uh, couldn't manage to get it all done, especially while I wasn't feeling well. So thank you again. And I will see you next time. Bye.